Hey guys, welcome back to PHI Games History and Reviews, and today I have the comic book review. But first, there's a couple things I need to talk about. First things first, um, this is kind of like a Simpsons themed episode, uh, being mostly because I'm, mostly because I'm starting to reread a lot of my old comic books, and I'm starting with The Simpsons. So the next couple episodes might have a whole bunch of Simpsons in there, but uh, we do have, you know, but, but we will, um, have some other stuff like this episode about eighty percent of it Simpsons, but then we have a couple comic books like I know we have a Ghost Rider, maybe a Batman, all the usual stuff I guess. But yeah, uh, also I want to say um, I kind of realize you know these come out like every other week, like and I do the go collect thing. Uh, to clarify, I'm not you're not missing anything. You know you're not missing like a week. Um, I actually film my comic book review every week, and so the only things I actually update weekly is the hottest comics, then the bronze, silver, and golden age supposedly update monthly, but every week when I go do it, like, maybe a little thing has changed. Like, two comic books have switched spots, so something like that. So you're not really missing out on anything. The only time you are missing out on it is when... Uh, I'm not filming the comic book review, and that, you know, you know like right now, uh, I haven't filmed you know, like the movie review like in a month, because I'm kind of done with that. Well, it's done film like the season, and like, I have no need to film anymore for now. So yeah, once it gets so once it gets to that, but with the comic books, it rarely never does because I'm always getting new ones. Uh, ones are always getting reread, and so they always get stacked up on the pile once the review. So yeah. So you basically had not missed anything since March, really. Uh, yeah. Also, I've noticed in some of these videos that this... Well, I noticed that uh, the... Kind of like the quality of the video is like blurry-ish. Kind of how it was I used just to film the, my gallery on my iPad, on my tablet. Now it's just to Google Slides. Looks ten times better. But I realize it's still blurry, and that's the screen recorder. It's not the picture. It's the screen recorder that's blurry, by the way. So I am sorry. And I did look into the one that I've been using for years and found out it's very low rated, surprisingly. Um, so at the time I got this, it was very like high rated. It was pretty good. Like, it's not anymore. So, I wonder if there's, like, a setting that I can, like, make it, like, higher quality. Like, I know I can do that with my editing app that I use. I can make stuff, like, lower quality or high quality. So, I'm wondering is if this is one of those two. But, yeah. So, that's all I really have. So, at number one for this week, um... Uh, and that's, what, that's, also what's, that's also why I say this week a lot, because I film every week. So, this week... Um, you, if you're a regular viewer, you would know this one. This is Spider-Man number 361, First Pians of Carnage. And also, for the top 10 hottest comics, we have the number on the side. And the next one, we'll say number 1, but it's 2. I forgot, I forgot to change it. Um, so, this was last week's number 1. I say that because it says 1 on the side. And, um... So this is Ultimate Fallout number 4, first appearance of Miles Morales as Spider-Man. And, um, so this is actually uh, kind of jumped on the top 10. It's well, fairly recently. Uh, when I started doing this, it I haven't even heard of this comic book before. But very recently, it started jumping up in the top 10 in, in, in the last couple months. Same in this case, this next one, I've never heard of before. And it was in literally last episode. These these next two jumped on the scene of the top ten. I don't know what happened in the comic book world because I don't really follow comic book news except if it kind of talks about movies and stuff. But I guess something happened with Venom and the Inhumans because now these two comics have gone up. At number three, we have Venom number three. That's ironic. And uh, so this is the first appearance of Knoll. I don't know who that is. I guess the god of the symbi uh, symbiotes. 
And at number four, we have Inhumans number five. This is actually last week it was number five, because I remember, like, oh, that's funny, it's Inhumans number five, then number five. Haha, <laughs> funny, funny, funny. So, yeah. Uh, at number five, we have Amazing Spider Man number 300, a regular one. Uh, it's been in the top ten since we started. Uh, the first appearance of Venom was issue inked by Todd McFarlane. And it's the 25th anniversary issue. And I did not know all that stuff I just said. At all. Until I started doing this. Like, you know, like, like seeing these comics that are on so much, I actually memorized it. So, this is Mar uh, Secret Wars number 8. This is the first appearance of the black Spider Man costume. So, next we have the New Mutants number 98. This is the first appearance of Deadpool. That's the only reason why it's big. Uh, next, we have Spawn number 1. First appearance of Spawn. Number 9. Oh man, I messed up again. Oh, whoops. I didn't mess up. I forgot to switch the two slides, I think. Whoops. Okay, so at number 9, we have Amazing Spider-Man. Number 252. This is the first appearance of the black suit that we mentioned earlier. And the Amazing Spider-Man, the comic. And then next, we have Star Wars number, ten, uh, Star Wars number 1 and number 10. Uh, I do have this one, by the way. So I own only one in the top 10. So, yay. Okay, past that. So, so now we go into the Bronze Age. The Bronze Age of comics is well. Right now, we well, if you're a modern day collector, we are collecting in the Copper Age. Uh, before the Copper Age was the Bronze Age. In the Bronze Age, basically everything like 1973 to like maybe like the late 80s, early 90s. That's the Bronze Age. Superheroes that came out of this age is like Nova, Luke Cage. Uh, yeah, that's all I can think of right off hand. Oh, Jonah Hex, if you know who he is, he came out of this age of comics. So it was mostly like dominated by Marvel in this age of like new superheroes and stuff. And Iron Fist, that's the other one. Basically all of the Netflix series um, <laughs> uh, that they have. Uh, and maybe Punisher, no, Punisher was like last of the... Silver Age. So, uh, so what we have this week is basically last week, but a couple things have changed in our Bronze Age. Uh, at number one, we already talked about this one, Secret Wars number eight. Then we have 252 again. Then, so now we have Wolverine number one. Uh, Wolverine number one is the first solo, is the first well, Wolverine comic, like solo comic. And next we have the internals. Oh, I forgot about these guys. So the internals, well, first appearance number one. No one like knew about them until like recently, like until a year or two ago, when DC not DC when Marvel announced the Eternals movie. Now everyone wants the Eternals. Like that's kind of like how it goes. Like once a character is in a movie, or movies announced, everybody wants a comic book. So. Yeah, except for except for the Helen Commandos, like Sergeant Fury and the Helen Commandos, you can still get those relatively cheap. Surprisingly, I say surprisingly because it's the Helen Commandos. Um, next, you have She Hulk number one, first appearance of She Hulk. Next, Star Wars number one, at number six. At number seven, you have Thor three thirty seven, first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. At number eight, yeah, you have Spider Woman number one. Uh, this you get like a uh, it's a new complete origin, and the mask that she wears is also added. Then, ah, uh, this oh, this is Bronze Age. Oh, so then Wolverine and the Punisher are both. Basically, everyone from the Netflix series was introduced in this age, I guess. Um. So we have um, the Amazing Spider-Man number one twenty nine first pins of the Punisher and the Jackal, and at number ten first pins of Wolverine, on the Incredible Hulk number one eighty one. So next we get the Silver Age. The Silver Age of comics basically spans nineteen fifty two to nineteen seventy two. It's about twenty years, 
And this age, basically all of, all of the Marvel Universe was created in this age, except Captain America at some manner. And the people I mentioned, the Bronze Age. So basically, the Avengers, basically all the Avengers were introduced in this era of comic books. Uh, also, in the DC kind of side of things, uh, Martian Manhunter, the Elongated Man that's in Flash. Um, the new Flash, like the Bay Allen Flash, the Hal Jordan Green Lantern, and uh, lots of other characters. And so, about most of the comic books in this era were also um, inspired later com well, later comic books and TV shows, like I like the first season of The Flash was based off comic books from this era, and stuff like that. So number one, right once again, is Fantastic Four number fifty-two. This is the first appearance of Black Panther. At number two, number forty-nine, and at number three, I uh, so I'm skipping these. I'm kind of going fast because these are on every week. And at number three, we have Silver Surfer. Number one is the first. Well, you will get the origin first issue of the Salt Out series. Uh, Fantastic Four number forty-eight, first appearance of the Silver Surfer in Galactus. Next, you have Iron Man number one. It's the first self-titled issue. And next, at number 50, I don't know, I'm at number 6, you have uh, Amazing Spider-Man, number 50, first appearance of the Kingpin. At number 7, uh, you have Avengers, Avengers, number 48, first appearance of Black Knight, the third in the origin. At number 8, first appearance of Daredevil, and basically everyone who's kind of in that comic book series kind of thing. And, yeah. At number 9, you have Captain America, number 100. It's Captain America's first self-titled series in the Silver Age. The, and also, the death of fans, Gruber. Um, I think, is fans Gruber, isn't he the guy who, who was the bad guy in uh, Civil War? He kind of pinned the Avengers against each other? And that might have been him. Then, like, and next at... Number 10, Amazing Spider-Man. Number 41, the first appearance of Rhino. So now we have our Golden Age. So the Golden Age of comics is basically everything from 1951 and older. Um, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, people introduced in this time, the Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, Lex Luthor, Blackhawk, um... Green Arrow, I said Wonder Woman, right? Uh, the Question, Doctor Fate, um, the Spectre, the Shadow, Green, the Green Hornet, Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, the Lone Ranger, basically uh, Dick Tracy. These are all people introduced in the Golden Age of Comics, and at number one this week. Uh, this is the only thing that's really changed this week uh, in the Golden Age is Batman number 24 is at number 1. And the Atomic Bolt number 1 has gone down to number 2. I don't know who this guy is. If you guys know who this guy is, put it in the comments below. I've never heard of him before in my life. So then at number 3, once again, we have Mad number 1. At uh, number 4, Batman number 32. And then at number five, we have Crime and Suspense Stories number 24. Okay, Crime and Suspense Stories. Uh, the only reason why it's famous is because of its covers. And also, it was used, uh, a lot of their comics were used in the Senate investigation trial against comic books. Because now if you see this cover, people will be like, eh. But... For a nineteen fifties comic, that you know that's that's this cover is probably the most gruesome thing anyone's seen in their life. If they were not in World War, if they were not fighting in World War Two. Other than that, like this is like the most gruesome thing anyone's seen. 
Like, look at this cover. Like, just, just look how evil it is. It's just like, that guy looks like a complete maniac. Man. No wonder why the comics code authority was created. And so number six, we have World's Finest number seven. This is the first appearance of the Green Arrow. Well, yeah. Uh, next, we have Mask Comics number two. And I was thinking, like, this is a, actually a cool cover. Like, I, you know, if I, if I saw this... I would not think of this being a Golden Age comic. I would think this would be, like, kind of a modern day. And number eight, we have Georgie Comics, number 13. I don't know who this guy is, but the art kind of reminds me of Archie. Like, the old Archie comics. So, is this, like, the predecessor to Archie? I don't know. So, yeah. And so at number 9, we have Batman number 47. This is the first, where we get the, the first detailed origin of Batman. Uh, you find out that where Batman goes, tracks down his parents' killer, and, and the identity is revealed. And it's the first time the Bat signal has ever been on a Batman cover. Then at number 10, you have Sup Superman number 74. This, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, and also the the guy to the right, and like in like the you know the white outfit that's like Luther, by the way. So those are all the comic books for this week. Okay, so here's our first comic for today. As I said, this is like the unofficial Simpsons episode. Well, is it like the one? Shot Wonders or something like that. Like the wall, uh, yeah. So, uh, so, t so uh, today we have T. Wiggums. I'm not even gonna try to say this word. A uh, funnies. Um, so, um, so Bongo Comics, uh, does all of the Simpsons comics. And they, uh, every once in a while they do, like, a one shot of a character. And, that's pretty much all the Simpson comics we're going to do today. It'll just be the one shots of characters. This is definitely one of the this is the Chief Wiggum one, uh, and yeah. So this is really good. It's funny because they you know uh, he basically Chief Wiggum goes to like a uh, kind of like a police meeting and falls asleep. Then he starts just dreaming about him fighting crime in the future. With, like, a guy from Planet of the Apes. It's funny. So I'll give this one a five-star review. And if I forgot to do it earlier, I don't remember. Uh, five stars is good. Five is the best, one's the worst. Three is, like, my happy medium. So next we have Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider number 47. Um, this might be, sadly, the last time you might see Ghost Rider on here for a while. Because uh, the place I usually go to to get all my comics at... Had a whole bunch of these old Ghost Riders. Now they're all gone for some really odd reason. Like, like I mean, they had like almost all of them. So it's just like, who bought them all? Yeah, we may never know. But um, so yeah, this might be one last time you might see Ghost Rider on here for a while. Hopefully, he comes back soon. So this one was it was was a relatively good episode, uh, a good comic. I'm trying to remember what exactly happened, but I think, um, you know, you know, Giant Storm, his, um, his motorcycle breaks down, and he goes to a shop, gets it fixed, and, well, this guy, you know, he, um, he's struggling to get these bikes fixed, and he's like, hey, I'll help you, and so he starts helping him, and after a while, he, he, he finds out this guy's kind of part of, like, some, like, oh, no, I'm thinking of a different one. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Oops, wrong one. Wrong comic. That's a different one that we've reviewed before. Um, th okay, this one is, I think, Johnny Storm stays at that girl's house only to get, like, the brother or, like, her boy, like, ex mad, and they try to kill. Yeah. So, yeah, so if, I, so if I remember, this, um, this one is relatively okay. And, um... 
Oh yeah, I, I think I forgot to mention, my mom reads my comics, she buys them for me, and I thought, hey, you should read them too, because I'm probably only going to read them like three times in my whole life. So yeah. Like, like, a lot of these Simpson ones, these are the first time I've reread them, and I've had them like for four years. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty bad. Next, you have the Mighty Moses Lack. Um, as this is another one of those one-shot kind of things. Um, and, well, I thought this one was really good. I liked it a lot. It was really entertaining, and they had a kind of like a, um, it was, it was good. So I'll give it a five-star review. So next you have, uh, the Krusty the Clown issue. It's the first and last issue. Um, so this one, it was good. Uh, they did a, um. It was kind of like, uh, uh, they kind of did like a questy channel, and it had all like the, but basically the backstories of actually lots of, well, like the origin of questy, and the backstories of actually lots of, um, well, well, characters in Springfield, like Kent Brockman, some people like that. So it was really good, I'll give it a five star review. Okay, this comic book, oh my gosh, okay, this comic book is one of my most favorite, oh my gosh, it's kind, of, it's kind of ripped down there, oh. So this comic is probably one of my most favorite comics to read. This comic is just great, it's a great comic, and why it's so great is, do you remember when you were a kid, like in fifth grade, and you would read those You Choose books, you choose your own adventure books, well, they did it in a comic book. So basically, Grandpa is basically telling stories to his kids, and you choose his you know, what he says to the kids, Bart and Lisa. So it is really good. It's it's really it's and it's really entertaining. Like like I just go through and I, I try to do every possible one, which you can do. It is possible. And yeah, it's really good. I. It's one of my favorite comic books I have. So a five-star review, hands down, yeah. Okay. Here's our last Simpsons for the day. Um, it, we have Deaf Man Adventures. Um, this one, uh, you get the origin of Deaf Man. Yes, the origin. And, uh, and there's a free Deaf Man mask inside, too. I've not taken it out. Because I like my things in mint condition. Okay, so... Uh, so in this comic, you get the origin of Deaf Man. And you find out there's like a planet. Kind of dedicated to Deaf Man's all over the universe. I'm not that surprised. Basically, it's Green Lantern. Basically, if you're a Green Lantern fan and get the gist of it. Like, you know, the Green Lantern core. Basically, it's that, but, all, but it's... They're all partying and all wearing Deaf Man costumes. That's literally exactly what it is. And, and so yeah. That's what it is. Alright, and also, I probably, I'll probably also give this one a five star review. It's really good. So, as I said, that was kind of the last, like, Simpsons ones. Next, we have uh, three comics left. And these are non Simpson ones. Um, first, we have Blackhawk number 197. So, uh, if you go and go collect, this always bugs me. Uh, if you go to go collect and you type in like Blackhawk, you, there's a button that you can hit the key. Uh, the, the key. Gosh, the key issues. And um, and for Blackhawk, it was always. Just the first Blackhawk issue. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, no. Blackhawk should have way more key issues. Kind of thing. And, and Blackhawk is very underrated. So, this should be one of them. Because, uh, so Blackhawk used to have uniforms, like in this. This is our next comic that we're going to do, but, you know, you know their uniforms used to be like this. Well, they switched them to this. So the first issue to have these red uniforms. So I think that's why this should be a key issue. 
And there's also a couple other ones that I think should be key issues too. But, but no. Yeah. <laughs> a little John Belushi thing. Okay, um, so this is 197. And so basically the Blackhawks are called in by some weird guy. I don't, I don't remember his name uh, right offhand. But they say these two countries are going to go to war. Um, can you stop it? So what they do, they kind of put on these new uniforms, kind of like, because cause in the DC universe, anyone knows what this uniform is. You know, anyone knows that this is the Black Hawk uniform, we'll that later. Um, and so everyone knows that. So they're like, hey, let's put on these red uniforms, so, you know, we can kind of disguise ourselves. That's what they did. They put on the red uniforms to disguise themselves. And at the end, they're like, hey, let's keep them, kind of thing. But so basically, they have to stop the two countries from going to war. But this one country has, of course, as the sci-fi part of this, is that this one country has actually found a cave system that holds dinosaurs. Yeah. And so they find out how to control them. So I'm going to end it there. So, so this is the new Black Hawk, and they would keep these uniforms, basically, I think for the rest of the series, until, like, late. Well, Black Hawk is, uh, what they did with Black Hawk, well, it started out in the 1940s, and so that's why you got 197. So, they started out in the 40s, and so they went, got the 40s. And they got, in the, in the early 50s, the company that did them, I forgot who it was right offhand, got bought out. And so then this uh, company started doing them, and then they got bought out by DC. Then DC went and just kept doing them, and then towards like the end of the DC run in the late 60s, they started giving them like, new uniforms, superpowers, stuff like that. And I think when they started giving them superpowers is when they went back to the black, like black, bluish uniforms. But... But then DC would stop Black Hawk, and like five years later, they start up again, stopped again in the 70s, like after like a year of issues, and start them back up again in the 80s. And that's. And then once again, DC stopped Black Hawk, only to start up again in the 90s, and then it has been one since. And also, um,. According to DC, some, I guess, some comic book people. Uh, so DC has announced a Black Hawk movie. Uh, Steven Spielberg is going to direct it because he is actually a huge Black Hawk fan and actually tried to get a Black Hawk movie. Uh, well, he, he actually tried to make one in the 80s, but it never went off. And so right now, I guess they're saying they're getting the cast together. But also, they're trying to figure out if this Black Hawk series, well, this movie, should uh, uh, kind of intertwine with the DC Universe, like you know, Batman v Superman, Justice League, and all those movies. So they're trying to think, hey, is this going to be a standalone movie, or is this going to intertwine with those? So they're trying to figure that out. But yeah. So this comic was really good. Uh, so I get off track. But so this comic is really good, and I would give this about a four-star review. So this is one of those 80s Blackhawks I was talking about. Um, so this one, uh, Blackhawk is behind enemy lines. And um, so what I like about the 80s Blackhawk, because originally in the 40s Blackhawk, they would fight, well, like, bad, like, actual people, like, you know, like the Nazis sold, you know, like kind of bad guys. But then, like, once DC started doing it, uh, they only really fought one bad guy, and that was Killer Shark, who would come up every once in a while. But then they fought, like I said, they fought dinosaurs. They fought, like, aliens, a lot of stuff like that. And, um,. What I like about A's Black Hawk was they kind of went back to, like, early Black Hawk when they fought, like, the Germans, like a World War II-ish kind of comic. So that's what I like about this one. 
that it's a World War II-ish comic book. And so this came out in the 1980s, so basically, Black Hawk has been killed, and and so the, the assassin that killed, the German assassin that killed him, is going to go to a party and meet Hitler face to face. But in real life, Black Hawk was not killed, he actually killed the assassin, and so he's going to so he's going behind enemy lines to go pretend he's an assassin that killed Black Hawk and try to kill Hitler. Yeah. So, fun, yeah. So this one is a really good comic book. Uh, and I think it might continue. Like, I think the story continues after this. I'm trying to remember. It's been like a week since I've read it. But, yeah, it was really good. And he, um, yeah, it's just really good comic. I'll give this one probably about a four-star review. So here's the last comic book of the day. Uh, you're probably wondering where this was, you know, this character, because he's in every episode, most of the time. Uh, Batman. We have Detective Comics number 360. Okay, so the issue before this, fun fact... Was number 359. You're like, oh my gosh. You figure that out. Congratulations. Well, uh, number 359 is actually a very famous comic book. We have reviewed the reprint on here a couple times. Actually, I think the episode before this, we actually uh, reviewed the reprint. But the reprint is actually uh, the first appearance of Batgirl. The 359's first appearance of Batgirl. So, yeah, fun fact. So, um, so this one is, so a bad guy, uh, comes up with a, uh, well, he, well, he, you know, uh, he got, so basically, so this bad guy, a uh, Batman put away in jail, and so he's, you know, a Batman, you know, come, uh, you know knows that every move, because the boss yells out to the, henchmen what to do. So what, and so he's like, what if we created a secret code that only the bad guys knew and Batman did it? That's what he did. Like, a good example is this, DOA, dead on arrival. And so what he does, he, so let's say, like, if he, like, like, let's say I just said, let's go, instead of let's go, he would say, LG. See what I'm getting at? Or, like, get in the car, it'd be G-I-T-C, get in the car. And so, that's what he does. So, what's so sad, it doesn't say, because usually the people that I buy these comics from, they usually list what's wrong with the comic, like, oh, there's, like, some, you know, there's, like, a, uh, some writing inside, and there's, like, a, like, it's been, like, there's a, there's a page just kind of torn and corn, stuff like that. Usually they put this in the kind of list what's all wrong with the comic. Well, uh, they failed to do that this time. And there's, like, like, I think I, they're missing the whole story. You know, at the, at the last part of the story, they're missing it. So, like, this never happened in this comic. So I think they're, they're missing a page. And also, this is the first comic book I've actually owned that, so, you know, there's a lot of ads, and like, cut this out, kind of thing. So, this is actually the first comic book I've actually ever owned that actually, uh, someone actually cut out that ad. Usually, no one does, but this is the first one I own that someone actually cut out the ad, so I'm like, come on. Why? Why? So, uh, I'll probably give this comic book probably a four-star review. Was, the story was really good. I liked it a lot. And it was very, really, I guess, creative. So, yeah, that's all. That's all we have today. Uh, I said this, this was like an unofficial Simpsons episode. We have lots of other comics coming up. Uh, and, uh, well, the reason why this was an unofficial Simpsons episode because I'm rereading all my old comics. Because I went out of new ones to get from the comic book store because... Like, all the comic book series I collected before the pandemic, I think they just stopped most of them. So, no more Captain America, stuff like that. No, like, no more True Believers, if you're a regular viewer. No more, like, reprints and stuff. 
I think they're done with all those. Because suddenly, well, it's because there's nothing to promote at Marvel or DC. But yeah, so right now there's only like one comic book series out that I still collect. And it's just like, I need to find something else, I need to find something else. Or like there's one or two. But yeah, it's just like, it's just very weird. So yeah, that's all. Um, well, I said, uh, please, I'll leave like, subscribe, if you have any comments, complaints, questions, answers to the questions being asked, put it down in the comments below. I respond to everyone's comments. And if you, um, well, I want, well, if I, like, said anything wrong in this, uh, I'm, like, I'm, like, one of those people who does, who actually likes being corrected. Because, because, I don't want to say the wrong thing, like, to 50 different people, or, like, down the road. Um, I always like being corrected if I got stuff wrong. So, yeah, and also, if you just say something, like, incorrect, just say, hey, got this wrong, you say something incorrect, I, I do fact check. That's supposed to be a thumbs up. Okay, okay, let me see. There you go, that's a good one. But, um, but, yeah. So, yeah, I also want to know, what's your favorite comic book? What's your favorite comic book out of the ones that we did today? If you also have any other, um, like, facts about these comics or anything, or, like, basically, yeah, any other cool facts about these comics, put down in the comments below. I'd like to know, because most of the time, uh, these comics do get reviewed more than once. Like, if you watched the last episode, I reviewed a comic that was, like, in, like, well, I, a couple episodes ago, maybe. Oh, it was the first one that I had, you know, kind of the new thumbnail on. I reviewed the actual comic for that thumbnail again. And, yeah. So, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.